Are you enjoying the show? If so, don't forget to follow Hoodoo and Chill on Apple and Spotify and leave us a five-star rating. Would you like to attend an uncut, unedited, live taping of Hoodoo and Chill podcast? Then don't forget to follow Hoodoo Conjure Root Work on the Clubhouse app and tune in live Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Also, if you like the content and want to help our ministry grow, please support us by sending a donation of love. The link is in the podcast description. Now, back to the show. Good morning and grand rising, buenas noches, bonjour, jumbo, all of those good things. So excited to be here today on another Magic Mondays. Want to say welcome everyone to the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. It is Magic Mondays and today we will be discussing thanking the ancestors and the roots. With me today, I have our resident hoodoo voodoo queen slash goddess slash beauty queen slash sex magic guru 101, 102, 103. My partner in crime and also my partner in love and light, Miss Latoya Alexandria. Good morning. Grand Rising. Good morning and good light. Bonjour, bon l'outil. Je suis ici, l'évêque, le magnifique Cerveo. Founder and CEO of Hoodoo Conjure Root Work, Hoodoo Root Doctor and all around guru, and he's gorgeous. Welcome, everyone. I need you to talk like that more often. I I, I like that. I need you to, uh, I need you to do that more. <laughs> well... Once again, Grand Rising, my people. I'm so happy to have you all here today on another beautiful Magic Mondays. Today's topic, we are discussing thinking the ancestors in the roots. We will be discussing exactly what real gratitude is. We will be discussing just how important it is in your work. And essentially, how this can take your magic as well as Go beyond the surface level relationships that we have with the ancestors. I want to start today's discussion off with exactly what gratitude is versus what a lot of us have perceived or how it has been presented to us. I think this is the perfect time to even have this message because, of course, this week is Thanksgiving. One of my favorite holidays, not because of the story that they try to tell with it, because we all know that that is false, but because of the energy that we have created as a people. To me, Thanksgiving is nothing more than this big community ritual where once a year everyone can come together in the guise of thanks and communion and even if it's just for one hour we can all sit collectively together and eat I think no matter where the tradition derived from traumatic or not I still believe that that is one of the most beautiful holidays that we do have however when we talk about thanks gratitude as it relates to our spiritual walk or you know our relationships with our ancestors I think some of us have confused what is spiritual duty versus just authentic gratitude You see, a lot of us think that because you service your altar, that that is the same thing as having true authentic gratitude for the things that your ancestors are doing in your life or the blessings that they're giving you or the way that they've actually changed your life. Some of you 
right now are walking in the greatest prosperity that you have ever experienced in your life. Some of you are about to be taken to a level of success that you never would have expected. Some of you have experienced miracles from your ancestors. They have shown up in your life in ways that you never, ever would have expected. Yet, why do we believe that the only things that our loving, strong, and powerful ancestors deserve is just a glass of water? Let's talk about who our ancestors are because a lot of times when when people think about the ancestors we think about the fact that they are um generations that have passed our blood our bone our dna of course mothers fathers grandmothers so on etc but we need to understand that our ancestors are our spirit guides they are our messengers from the supreme being Their mission is to protect us daily, to lead us to success, to support us, to help hinder bad thoughts that we have, to break curses, to break addictions. They are ultimately helping us reach a higher consciousness. That is what they are there for. Now, with all of that, being said understand they don't have to do this they're doing this because they want to we take for granted that the ancestors are put in place because this is what they're supposed to do Uh uh-uh they don't have to come through for you this is why you will find that all of your ancestors will not come through only some of them will because the ones that come through for you want to do these things and they are doing it by way of wanting to help you and loving you Okay, so with them giving all of this, and we'll get into this a little bit later on the topic, but what are we doing to show true gratitude and thankfulness of the ancestors? Are we doing duty, which is what we're supposed to be doing? Are we actually being gracious and we actually being thankful? And how is that coming through? Hoodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. There's a sacrifice that comes with this. And at the end of the day, we're given the choice of how we want to sacrifice and what we're sacrificing for. And whether or not what we're sacrificing for is actually what we're supposed to be sacrificing for. Are we choosing the right path when we accept this proposal? that has this bag attached to it. Are we doing that? I want to, before I get into this, I want to take you all on just a a brief journey so you can truly understand why I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Close your eyes if you can for me, just for a moment. Okay? Just keep them closed and I'm going to tell you when to open them. I want you to picture one of your ancestors as a little child with a bag on their back standing in a cotton field. No shoes on, about maybe two or three years old standing in a cotton field with a bag on their back and they are picking cotton. Now I want you to flash forward. They're a little bit older. They're about 10 years old and they're still picking that cotton. Now as you as you as you envision this, I want you to imagine that bag of cotton getting heavier and heavier 
And for those of you that are from the South and know what a cotton field gives in the morning time, you know that that cotton is soaked with dew and it's a lot heavier in the morning time than it is in the evening time. Okay. Fast forward, they're still in that same place as a teenager. They're still in that same place as an adult, but maybe they just got married. Maybe they just had a child. Now that child's being taken away from them along with the mother or whomever. But they still have to wake up the next morning and go stand in that cotton field with that same bag. And they're going to do this until the day they leave this earth. Now, do you think that your ancestors you going to your altar is a place of I'm doing this because you all are doing for me or do you think maybe you should be going to that altar out of a place of duty because your ancestors loaded a burden on their back for you for you they are still here to this day fighting for you Now you tell me, the same way that you take care of your child and you take care of yourself without anybody giving you any thanks at all or nothing in return, I think we should channel that same energy when we take care of our ancestors. We don't service our altars because we're looking for something in return. And if that's what you're doing, I graciously, my people, ask you to stop. I graciously ask you the next time you approach your altar to approach it from a place of this is what I am supposed to be doing and be proud of it. Not burdened, not looking for something in return, not going to your altar seeking and seeking. No, you're going there because you come from a lineage of people who carried the burden, your burdens, believe it or not, on your on their backs. Just like you right now are carrying the burdens of those who will walk after you. We're not going through the things that we go through for no reason, my people. We are going through these things so that when we transition, we know exactly how to take care of those who will walk after us. Altar work is not just being gracious. It is spiritual duty. You do it because you're supposed to. Your gratitude from your to your ancestors should be as we talked about before manifested this is this is where the manifestations come in come in right things that are materialized your gratitude to your ancestors should be manifested through your actions through your works through you taking the blessings that they are bestowing upon you and taking it to its highest level being grateful for what you already have acknowledging the skills and the gifts that you were born with so let's just take a look at that for a minute okay so we have the ancestors coming to you and they're doing all these things again think about it that they don't have to do this is not their duty the ancestors that come through for you are the ones that want to come through for you this is by choice and they're there to elevate you, okay? To turn you into, or to actually not turn you into, but help you achieve your greatest self. So with that being said, if you are truly thankful and you are truly gracious, veneration of the ancestors will not feel like a task. It will not feel like a duty. Rather, it would be something that you will enjoy because you are truly thankful and you know what comes along with a strong relationship with them. 
not just that you are trying to get, get, get from them, but you are truly saying, you know what? Because of you, I can be my best self. And I'm thankful for that because without you, most likely it would not happen. So how are you approaching this then? Are you taking at least 20 minutes a day to talk to them? Offer some prayer to venerate them. 20 minutes a week, actually. 20 minutes a week. That's all it takes. I mean, or are you just too tired? You got too much going on. I can't do it. But you expect to get the elevation from them. Do they deserve that? We need to approach our ancestors and be truly thankful for them just wanting to be a part of our lives because by them wanting to be a part of our lives and being active in our lives, we know that we are going to be better people overall. And I don't know about you, but that is something to be thankful for. I have so much gratitude for that. Where would I be without them? Who knows? How many of us have been in a situation or relationship, job, what what have you, right? Where you're hearing, you are appreciated. I love you. You're you're great. You're amazing. You're this, you're that. How many of us have been with a person who wakes up in the morning, tells us that they loves us, go to bed telling us that they love us, that they love us. Yet their actions display something different their actions do not match up with the things that they are telling me how many of you have walked away from something because you said out of your own mouth i don't feel appreciated or you do not appreciate me enough you didn't say You don't tell me that you appreciate me. You said, I don't feel appreciated. Most of our feelings, the true core authentic ones are channeled by people or triggered by people's actions, not just people's words. So I say that to say, think about how your ancestors feel when we are constantly on Clubhouse talking about how much we love them and how great they are and how amazing our lineage was and my grandmama was a voodoo and my mama was a hoodoo and this, this, that, and the third and all of this stuff that you're saying and it sounds great. But what are you doing with your actions to show that you really appreciate what they are doing for you? Because the truth is, Some of your ancestors are working overtime just to keep some of you alive. Let let me say that again, because I I think I might have hit somebody with that. Some of your ancestors have been working overtime just so that you can be here today. Your gratitude should not just be shown in the things that you place on your altar. Okay. Your gratitude is shown in actions of my ancestors have blessed me with this career that I did all of this work and pulled on their energy for. So instead of me going here with an attitude and I don't want to talk to people, oh, I'm talking to somebody today. Fix your attitude. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but spirit just told me to tell you that you're going to work with a nasty attitude and they gave you that job. They gave you that position. And the only reason why you are not getting back what you're supposed to be getting back is because of the attitude that you walked into that place with every day. It stinks. I don't know who I'm talking to, but fix that. But that's a perfect example of the, the ungratitude that, that a lot of us show to our ancestors. They blessed us with something that you, 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 you pulled on their energy for. Yet your actions do not speak of, I am appreciative for this. Thank you so much for giving me this. You walking on that job with a nasty attitude. You don't like the people and so what? You're not there to like them. 
you're there to elevate. Some of you were blessed with businesses that you just went out here and maybe did some PPP stuff for and your, and your, and your bootlegger uncle might have pushed that on through for you. And instead of taking that income and doing what you were supposed to do with it, you did everything else. And you wonder why right now you're still sitting at that altar buying all of this stuff and you're still not getting anything back. What did you do with the blessing that spirit gave you? Some of you could not even have a child. And you worked that water or that root until you were blessed with that spirit baby that angel that gift sitting in your house and how dare you just give them an ipad and say go play gratitude is taking time to cultivate the mind the love and most importantly the spirituality of that child i get so irritated when i hear people say i took care of you i give you this i give you that you're supposed to your job your job, your duty, let's get back to that. Your duty was to provide food, shelter, education, and all of the basics until that child was able enough to walk out of your house and legally you're buying it for 18 years. So miss me with that. You don't deserve a thank you for doing things that you're supposed to do. I'm gonna say that again, my people, because I love y'all. You do not deserve a thank you for the things that you're supposed to be doing. That's duty. You do it because you're supposed to and you should do it with a happy heart. But going beyond that and doing things outside of that and really cultivating a gift that spirit has given you to its fullest potential is some of the greatest gratitude that you can show to your ancestors. Being there for your children when they need you, not just when you want to be. Going above and beyond what is just expected of you as a parent. Because you act spirit for that child. Some of you are in relationships that it are 120% spiritually ordained. Like, like literally, you have your soulmate. This, this is a, not even just a gift from your ancestors. This is a gift from God right here in your house. And you got them and you lay back and say, love me. That's it. I'll just love me. Take care of me. Feed me. This, this, me, 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 me. What about when spirit blesses you with a relationship or a soulmate you fighting and you going out and doing everything in your power to protect what spirit has given you not just running away from that relationship when things get rough because that's not how your grandparents made it to 40 and 50 years but going to get the therapy and the things that you need to do so that you guys can stay together. You want to talk about breaking generational curses? Start there. Start there. Protecting the beautiful gifts that spirit has already given you. If you have a family, if you have a relationship, a marriage, any of those things, start there. Because the truth is, your grandmother worked over time to bring that in for you. Now she will have to work again to separate y'all and then work again to bring somebody else. Ancestral abuse is real, but we'll talk about that on another show. But but let me just, let me break this down to y'all. Ancestral abuse is real and just be thankful that you cannot go to jail for it because some of us would be locked up and thrown under the jail. What are your actions behind your gifts? What are you doing once you're blessed with these things? Have you thought about that? Are you being blessed with a car and you're treating it like trash? It's trashed and it's it's you. It's not insured so you hit something and it has dents all in it and it looks terrible. 
but you wanted this right you wanted the transportation you wanted the ancestors to bless you with something to get around you wanted something nice you wanted the car that you wanted are you caring for it like you should or are you taking it for granted that if I crash this car if I do whatever to it oh the ancestors to bless me with another one where's the gratitude in that the money that you're getting because the ancestors are not just working for you they're working for generations to come so this wealth that you're getting all of this money what are you doing with it are you investing it for generations to come are you setting up funds for generational wealth or are you just spending frivolously on whatever whenever because you want it now You are blessed and you receive these things for a reason. And the ancestors expect that you care for your blessing because they cared and loved you enough to work to get it for you. That is gratitude. That is thankfulness. Giving them a glass of water is not. That is duty. And that is where the line is drawn between the two. So we need to start recognizing and understanding this concept. You don't get praised for your duty. That is what you are supposed to do. You shouldn't give praise to parents for doing what they're supposed to do. And I hate to say it, but more so the fathers are praised for coming in and being fathers. Why? You are a parent just like the mother is a parent. And just because, oh, well, they spend, you know, at least he spends time. At least he gives money. No. At least he is doing less than the bare minimum so why are we treating him like he's done something grand because he spends a little time and because he spend, gives a little money that's nothing that's duty and that's half duty that's not even full duty right there a lot of us are expecting this this praise or this rain down on me and blessings because I sit at my altar every day of the week. You probably should. Your ancestors worked their asses off for free for nothing and died and everything else so you could sit on Clubhouse all day. You probably should sit at your altar every day of the week. I'm not doing it. Love y'all. Y'all get Sundays. Hey, ancestors. But hey, you know, whatever works. And no, nobody should be patting you on the back or you looking up to the sky expecting all these blessings and all this stuff to rain down on you just because, oh my gosh, I spent some time with you all. You should. That is your duty. You should. Because before you had that altar, if you have an altar, if you even have a picture of your ancestors up, if you even have a glass of water next to them don't think that oh my god my whole life should change because you did something that you probably should have been doing since the time that you could understand what transition life and death was truth be told a lot of us mm, are just making up for lost time hate to break it to you a lot of you are just making up for lost time a lot of you haven't even acknowledged your ancestors up until the pandemic so don't think just because you built this beautiful altar that you deserve all of this to just change it's, it, it is beyond that like Toya said it's only a portion of how gratitude is manifested in your life. Your ancestors are not only just watching over you. I hate the fact that uh, we even approach our ancestors with this solitary view of that they are only responding to you like you're the only one you're not they're working for you and the rest of your family members even the ones that you don't like even the ones that you think that they shouldn't be protecting 
guess what? They got spirit guides too. A lot of times we are blessed. A lot of times your magic went through because you were supposed to take it, take that blessing and do something with it. Sometimes spirit doesn't want you to share your blessings, but a lot of times they do. A lot of times they want you to take take it and do something else with it other than just spend it or just live in it or just go to the job and collect a paycheck or just wake up every day and look at each other and say, oh, I love you. No, they didn't put you two together for that. They put you two together maybe to create a business so that your family never has to worry about money again. They put you two together because that spirit and your spirit was going to be able to usher in the type of spirituality your family needs. They brought you two together so that when everyone sees you, when they see you and your divine half walking, yeah, your divine half walking with you, that this, this is the power of the ancestors right here. That when I really trust on them and, and, and really allow them to channel through me, they can manifest my divine half right here. People can disagree with me or not, but this concept of ancestors coming through to, you know, do harm to you and stuff like that. I believe the unelevated ancestors are so unelevated that they just can't touch us, that they just, they sit over there and they, they it's like, I don't know. I've never experienced an ancestor trying to do me any harm. Maybe, you know, acting a fool once in a while, but not like trying to harm me. I, and, and for those of y'all that even want to put that on your ancestors, let me break it to you. Some of y'all have trickster spirits walking with you and it's not your ancestors. This is all that other shit that you're worshiping that, and, and not giving the right, not doing the right offerings for it. That's what's trying to harm you, not your ancestors. Your gratitude is not in just your offerings or the things that come out of your mouth your ancestors are watching every action and they watch what you do with the blessings that they give you and that is how they determine how they're gonna bless you again if they choose to when you come to them again That is how they determine that. They, they're watching you. They're watching you. They're watching how you treat your children. They're watching how you treat those around you. My people, they're watching how you treat yourself. Gratitude to them is, is, is taking care of yourself. It's taking care of yourself. Like, can we cut our ancestors a, a break? I mean... God, y'all, this, this abuse that we do to them sometimes, it's like some of them have worked all of their lives and never knew what it was to have a vacation while we trying to fight for our next Airbnb. And then it's like, we don't even do the simple things of just taking care of our health so that we don't have to end up in the hospitals and then having to petition them for healing. It's like, oh my gosh. There are so many things that you can do in your physical life to kind of take that burden off your ancestors a little bit because if they always having to fix all of the little dumb shit how can they bring in the big blessings that you deserve if you ate better they wouldn't have to come try to heal you from high blood pressure and all of this stuff or maybe if you just did 20 and walked 20 minutes you know we can eradicate that so now we can focus on prosperity if you stop dating toxic ass people, we wouldn't have to do separation work every three months. And we could start focusing on, you know, maybe that business that you want, or, you know, maybe that grant that you're trying to get for your nonprofit, or, you know, maybe that raise that you need, or maybe that new home that you want. But we can't focus on that, right? Because every three months, we got to do separation work because we don't know how to stop dating toxic people and bringing that into our lives. Thank you, ancestors. Love you so much. Here's another one. When we learn how to start teaching magic and spirituality from a very balanced perspective of the things that you do 
in your day-to-day life affect how your work and your and your magic is going to work i think a lot of us would channel some energy and some things that we've never expected because there's a glass full of water on your altar and all of these beautiful offerings but the altar of your soul has nothing nothing and you walk in it every day because the aesthetic of what you're doing looks and feels good but you only scratched a surface level of this relationship with your ancestors I mean I think that we need to really start taking a look at our approach with our ancestors and understand that it's not just an altar it is what we do with the blessings that they bestow upon us like Sears said it's caring for yourself it's caring for your lover it's caring for your possessions it's investing your money for generational wealth all of these things they are watching us they're paying attention what if one day they just stop how would we feel then? Well, if they say, all right, well, you know what? I've given you enough. I, I'm, I just, I can't do it anymore. What if? Honor your roots as well. They're not just herbs or just seasoning. As some of you like to even refer to them. Those are spirits. They're activated if you activate them. They're not just there for you to use, 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 and not also give thanks from which they came, the earth. Don't forget about that as well. Pick up your trash, recycle. Don't be wasteful. Don't overuse the root some of these roots will not be available forever if you have seeds plant them if you have plants take care of them give your roots back to the earth after you have worked them so much that they can no longer be worked but that takes a long time if you truly know how to work a root you only need a little bit and a little bit goes a long way Spend more time in nature. Pick up some of the trash you see around your building. And some of you don't even do that. And then call yourselves root workers. That's the one that gets me the most. A root worker, a real root worker, is one of the most earth day, hippie, I love nature, I love the earth people that you would ever be around they love the earth and they don't just say it they their actions really truly display that they love the earth they are your gardeners they are your earth day activists they are your botanists people that actually do their duty to take care of this earth The root responds to them the best. Why do you think traditionally most root workers were farmers? Why do you think most root workers traditionally were gardeners or farmers? People who had their feet and their hands in the dirt and knew the power of just the dirt. The dirt all of the nutrients and energy that's just literally on the dirt that you walk on every day and don't think too too cares about it it's not just for your ancestors too guys mother earth deserves our respect our love and our tenderness as well when we think about the roots and the herbs the healing power 
the transformation, the way that they feed us. Yet we will penetrate and will pillage and we will rape the natural world and expect for the world and the earth to continue to give to us. We trash their homes, the forests, the oceans, the parks. And we expect them to continue to give. We will take and take and take until there is nothing else to be taken. And then you go to the store and you are looking for bay leaves or cloves or whatever. And they're out. Wonder why. Have we tried to replenish and to nourish and to give to the earth? No. They can only give so much. We've taken. We've taken. And not giving back. I just want to do a quick reminder that we are now have our we now have our December syllabus up for classes and workshops for the month of December. Now is an amazing time to join our clubs who do conjure root work. If you yourself are in need of spiritual mentorship, or if you just need a spiritual family or guidance, or for if you just want to learn hoodoo, or maybe you know some but you want to elevate your practice, we invite you to join our family. Utilize the link that we have posted, www.hoodooconjurerootwork.com. We have three different tiers of memberships right now. Anyone who upgrades or signs up with our Plus membership, not only are you afforded your free class each month, but you will get a free workshop next month as well. So basically, it is a two-for-one special, and we do have some amazing workshops coming up for the month of December as well as anyone who does decide to book a class between now and the end of the month you will also get access to a free workshop as well so whether you choose to join the membership monthly or whether you choose to just take a class you will get a free workshop included with that purchase as well also right now is an amazing time to book readings or anything like that we do have readings available 25 to 35 percent off i think one of the biggest specials right now is that you do have access to a 30 minute reading for only 75 dollars so once again i would go ahead and take advantage of that these deals will be running for black friday from now all the way up until the last day of november which will be november the 30th to give everyone an ample and equal opportunity to save some money with hoodoo conjure and root work okay so also we want to encourage everyone if you are just enjoying the ministry and you're getting fed and you just love our podcast and you want to see us continue to come back and spread this ministry or just want to see us grow our donation page is open we thank everyone um, who has been donating we really do appreciate that it's allowed us to do some things and we have some big things coming in the future so i just want to say thank you so much for the donations you can also do that by going to hoodooconjurerootwork.com and clicking on our donate page to send donations to our club we do appreciate any amount and we ask that our ancestors reciprocate your blessing three times over we want you to elevate to your highest self and so do your ancestors take care of yourself take care of each other take care of the ancestors Take care of the plants and the roots which feed and heal us. You are powerful. You are strong. You are confident. You are capable. You come from the best of the best. Warriors, magicians, doctors, lawyers, kings, queens, medicine men, root men, root women, and so on and so forth. You are descendants of royalty, demigods and goddesses and so on and so forth. You are amazing. Your magic is powerful. Your magic is fluid. Everything that you put your hands on, it shall manifest since you are like that word. All of the energy that you put out, it shall attract what you need so that your manifestations will manifest at their highest potential. You are confident in your abilities and your abilities are strong. Your ancestors love you and most importantly, we love you as well. Greetings. 
This is LaToya from HCR Love and Light Ministries. Are you new to spirituality and seeking either guidance or mentorship? Or maybe you've been practicing for a while and you need a place to call home. We invite you to join our family. Go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com to join the largest and fastest growing hoodoo network around. Here at HCR, we promote spirituality as a lifestyle and cultivate authentic practitioners on all levels. Check out the website and see what works for you. Do you need a mentor? Are you seeking classes? Or just access to the best hoodoo network available? We have a place for you. Join HCR Gold today.